Hey guys, so in this video we're going to go over how to graph your potato osmosis lab data. Um, here I have some sample class data. In a previous video I went over how to calculate mean and standard deviation using the class results. Um, but here I have my percent change data and then my mean or average percent change and standard deviation. Um, in order to graph it, I like to put it into, like, organize it a little bit differently. So I'm going to just type in what I've got here. So I have concentration, a solution, and that's in moles per liter. So that's one. And then over here, I'm going to put my percent change. Um, so here I had different concentrations. I had 0, I had 0 0.2 moles per liter, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1. And then here I have my percent change in mass. And I'm just going to copy the values that I have over here. I'm sure there's a fancy way to cut and paste, but for me I'm just, just going to go old school and copy it in. So 2.7, negative 15.6. Negative 27.8, negative 32.6, and negative 35.0. All right, so now I have my values entered and I want to graph this data. Um, so I need to first select the data that I want to graph. So I want to graph this. And then I'm going to hit Control and select the percent change in mass data. And then I'm going to go to insert, oops, no, that's not what I want. insert, chart. Um, and so Google thinks that this is what I want. That is not what kind of chart I want. So I'm going to come over here and look at the different types of charts that I can make. Um, so what I'm looking for is a line chart. Um, but there's all different types of charts that you can make. And you can look through here and it'll give you your different options. But I want a line chart. Um, however, Google is still a little bit confused because it is graphing both my concentration of solution and percent change in mass, where I want concentration to actually be my x-axis variable. Um, and so I have to explain to it that it's confused. Um, so what I'd really like is for it to use column B as the labels. I'm going to get rid of using that as my headers. Um, so now it's going to use column B as my x-axis, and it has my percent change as the y. Um, so here that's concentration of solutions going to go across the x, and then percent change is going on the y-axis. And so this is really the graph that I'm looking for. Um, I need to make some adjustments to the title. I kind of want to add in a line of best fit and so on. But that's basically how you get it to graph what you want. Um, so I'm going to go to Customize. And let's see. So I've got the chart style is fine. Um, before I do any of that, let's see. If I do Legend, will that let me? No. Chart and Axis Titles. So if I want to change the chart title, this is where I can do it. So I'm going to delete this and put in a title. So I can do effects of solution on percent change in mass. some other descriptive title. Hopefully it helps me spell concentration. Um, you want something that's going to be somewhat descriptive as your title. It could vary from that, but that's what I'm going with. And then I want to label my axes. So my horizontal axes, that's down here, is my concentration of solution. So I'm going to label that concentration. Of solution, and I want to make sure to include my units, which is moles per liter. Um, and then I can do my vertical, and 
then I can insert what that's measuring. So that's my percent change in math. Um, so now I've got all of my axes labeled. I'm going to come down, series. Now I would like to enter a trend line. Um, this point where it meets zero, where it crosses the x-axis, is actually where there is zero change in mass, which means that you have equal amounts of water moving in and out of the potato cores. So you assume that that is the point where the potato is isotonic to the outside solution. So anything up here, it's going to be gaining mass, so water would be moving into the potatoes. And anything down here, it's losing mass, so water is moving out of the potatoes. Um, and you're going to have to explain whether that's because it's a hypertonic, hypotonic, or isotonic solution here or here. So right there is where we want to figure out um, that's where it's zero. Um, and I do want to label the equation of the line because um, I can set that to zero to figure out what um, the x-intercept is. Um, and that's pretty much it. You've got your graph, you've got your intercept, um, and you can use this, print it out, and attach it to your lab. I'd like you to have a hand-drawn one as well as one that you did in either Excel or Google Sheets, whatever you're more comfortable with. Um, the hand-drawn one, you should make sure to put your error bars onto, so you're going to use that standard deviation calculation and enter your error bars. Remember, that's one up and one down. Um, Sheets is not great at entering that into um, a table. But that's it. If you have any questions, be sure to come into class and ask.